Welcome back to Advent of Women 2025. Today is day 24, so it's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, everyone. And I thought to myself, today we're going to do something a little bit different, something a little bit special. So we're not going to specifically look at a certain Vim feature today. Instead, we're going to do a little journey back in time to meet the ghost of editor's past, so to speak. So we're going to take a look at Ed. Ed was created in 1969 at Bell Labs by Ken Thompson. And it's actually the ancestor of everything you love about Vim, I guess. So come with me back in time and and let's check it out. Hi, my name is Marco. Let's get started. So let's just dive right in and just type add to start add. And you see a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> so nothing happened, right? No welcome message or notice, not anything. So add is more like the silent type, I guess. If you understand how add works, you will actually understand why Vim works the way it does today. So let's actually do something here. So I'm just gonna create a file here. So I'm gonna put in an A and hit enter. And now I'm just going to type in some text. So let's do a markdown file here. Let's say the ancient art of Ed or something like that. Hit enter for a new line and another one to just create an empty line here. And then let's just put in some text like in the time before Vim, there was Ed. Ed was silent as a dark, cold winter night. Let's, let's go with this. Let's hit enter again for a new line. And now I'm just gonna do another dot here and press enter. So we didn't get that much feedback yet, right? So let's do something you might know from Vim. Let's do a W, enter. And now we just got a question mark. So th this is the first time that Ed actually spoke to us. The question mark means something was wrong. I don't know what you did here or you did something wrong basically. To see what the last question mark actually meant, you can type H, hit enter, and there it says, no current file name. So we try to write the file with a W, that's the write command, you know it from Vim, probably, but we didn't have a file name yet. So let's try to give it a file name. Let's do a W, and then let's say ancient art of add.md. And now we got just this mysterious 103 as a response here. And this is actually just the number of bytes that this newly created file contains. So let's do another command here. Let's do Q. And now we actually quit add. So let's just open the file we just created in Vim, just, just to see if this worked, right? The ancient art of add. And you can see everything is here that we just typed. So we are total add professionals. We created a file with it. But of course, that's not all that add can do. So let's go out here again and type in add. And let's open the file we just created with add. So ancient art of add MD. Let's see what happens here. And still we just get this 103 again here, the number of bytes that this file contains. What if we actually wanted to see what's inside this file? Well, you can use P to print. So let's press P, hit enter. So this actually just printed the line we are currently at. So by default, if you open a file in add, you just jump right into the last line and that's where you're at. And if you want to see that line, you can actually use P to just look at the line you currently add. Let's quit add again to make a little bit more space here on the on the screen. Hit Control L to redraw the screen and let's open add again with the file here. Now this print command also takes ranges. So maybe you know the range of a whole buffer in Vim is the percentage sign. So let's try percentage P. And now we see we get the whole file printed out here. But it's not really clear to see which part of this is the is the prompt or the things we just wrote here which part is the file but in add you can use capital p which is another command that's not print stands for prompt and you can activate a prompt so every time you are prompted for something this asterisk is put in front of the line here so this is really helpful to see where you actually put something in yourself here there's also an alternative to the percentage sign for the whole buffer so you can give it any range here. You just use the comma and the P. This also means the whole buffer. Let's hit enter again and we see the complete file again. There are a few other commands like N and this puts out the line number of the line you currently add and the line separated by some white space here. We're currently at line four. But of course, if we wanted to edit something on the top of the file or in the middle of the file, we can also change our position here. So to go to the third line here, we can simply press three enter and add actually is that nice that it prints out the line where where we jump to so it's not completely silent <laughs> and we could work here from here now so if i just print again i would print out the line again or if i could 
enumerate it again with the n command for enumerate we would get this here or there's also the list command which does something a little bit different it lists also like these these end of line characters i'm not sure about other white space characters but at least the end of line character you can see here changing positions also works relatively so typing a plus one here will take me to line four because i'm currently at line three and it will just add one more line here so or I can go backwards as well. So let's do a minus three. And I end up on the first line here. So all pretty cool. So to create the file, we actually use the A command, which is the append command. In this case, you get into insert mode after the current line into the next line here. Let's try A again with hitting A. Now let's type another line, another line, hit enter. And to end the append command, you just type the dot here and hit enter. And now we get the prompt again. Let's see on which line we are currently. Let's use the end command for that again. So now we are on line two, and this is another line. Let's print out the whole document again. And we see we messed up our file a little bit here, but it's all right. It's just for demonstration purposes. So we are on another line still. We can also use the I command to insert before the line we are currently at. So if I press I, hit enter, this comes before the line we were at. Hit enter, the dot also gets you out of this command. Let's print the whole file again. Let's use the comma for that. And now I've fallen into the trap that I thought I knew what I was doing. But after printing the whole buffer again right here, I guess, that just put me down at the bottom of the of the file again. So let's let's try if this really works it like this. So let's go to line one here. Now we see we are at the ancient art of add. Let's print the whole file. And let's now do the enumerate command again. And sure enough, after printing the whole file, you get put at the end of the file. I don't know if it puts you at the end of the range you give it. We can, of course, try this out. So let's print the first three lines here. The print command and let's do the N again. Yeah, sure enough, you end up at line three then. I have to admit, I'm not an ad professional yet. I just tried it out in the last live stream, so bear with me here. <laughs> but I think it's really fun and helpful for understanding how Vim came to be actually, or what, what was the basis of Vim basically. But let's try out some more stuff. So here we saw a range format with one comma three, it targeted the first three lines. There are also a few special addresses, if you will, not just line numbers, but you can use the dot for the current line for the range. So let's do it again with the print. Let's print the current line again, which is actually empty because we are on line three here. Let's maybe move move down uh, one line here and do the dot print again, which is acting on the current line. Of course, this is optional because if you just hit P, you also get the current line here. But the dollar sign is another way to address the last line of the file. So let's do dollar sign P and we should get the last line printed out here. Now I'm curious if we just ended up at the last line again. I guess yes, but yeah, we are. So let's print out the whole document again here. Okay, just a comma, just printed out the last line here. Just, just was a movement change probably, I guess. Let's try out to go to the first line again. Let's just hit comma and hit enter again. I guess we just moved to the last line here, but I'm, I'm not sure. Let's, let's try out. Yeah, we just moved to the last line. We don't print out the whole range here, but just move to the last line, basically. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted to show you, actually. But let's just print out the whole buffer again here. So just for reference again. So let's say we wanted to change something in line three here, like in, in the time before Vim, there was add. So let's say we wanted to add something to this line. So the best way I found for this is the substitute command. So we also can give the substitute command a range. So we wanted to change the third line here, right? So use a three to target line three and then use S for substitute, then the pattern we want to find here. So let's say we wanted to add something to the end of the line. We can just use add and the dot has to be escaped, I guess, if it's just like in Vim. And then we can to add and the dot again, and then just add the thing we want to add to the line here. Like this is the new end of the line, hit dot again, and then just hit enter. Oh, and we actually messed up here. Also, we didn't get a match here. So maybe the dot doesn't have to be escaped. So you might want to go back in your history here in your command history, but this actually doesn't work. <laughs> so let's just uh, type this out again and try again. This is the new end of the line. Enter. Oh, and still no match. Oh yeah, of course, because the third line is actually the empty line here. Okay, so I messed up again with uh, just, just counting lines. 
This is the first line, second line, third line. There's nothing there, Marco. Here, this is the fourth line. I wanted to change this actually. Sorry for messing this up. Let's try again. And I guess we have to actually escape this. Another try. <laughs> okay, and you see this new line got printed out. We are probably also on this line now. Let's just check. Yeah, that's the current position we are at. So this is actually the thing I found to add something to the end of the line. Maybe there's a better way. Of course, the substitution command here is uh, just working like in Vim. So you could give it a range and work on multiple lines. You can use the global parameter to hit more things in one line. So if you wanted to change every E to be a capital E, for example, in the first uh, two lines, let's give it the range one comma two, and then the substitute, and then the E slash capital E. And then let's do this globally on the line so that we don't just substitute the first match in the line. Hit enter. Now let's print out the first two lines again. I would have expected to actually see something here, but it worked. So substitute just works the way it works in Vim. Let's just add another line here. Let's start this with a, with a hash as well to demonstrate the next command I want to show you. Just another line, enter dot, enter. So we're back at our prompt here. And let's just print the whole thing again so that we can see we have these two lines that have a hash in front of them. And we can, of course, also use the global command. So let's use G for the global command. Let's use a slash and then give it a pattern we want to match. So the hash in this case, we want to do something with all the lines that contain a hash. Give it a P command for now, yeah? So to just print out all the lines with the hash. Just like in Vim. Have a look back at the videos covering the global command here. Also, the V command works. So let's, let's do the same thing here. So this should print all the lines that don't contain a hash. And sure enough, this works. So on which line are we currently at? Okay, we are at line seven. So what if we wanted to delete a line here? You can just use the D command with a range or when you don't give it a range, it just deletes the line you're currently at. Let's print out the whole file again. So the last line just got deleted, but you can also move lines, for example. So let's say we want to move the first line to the, the end of the file here. So for that, let's just use one and M for move. And then let's use the dollar sign as the thing for the last line here. And this should move the first line to the last line of the file. So let's print out the file again here, the buffer. And sure enough, this also worked. We can also copy lines with the transfer command here. So let's copy the last line here back to the first line with dollar sign for targeting the last line, E for transfer, and then one for the target here, the first line. Let's print out the file again. It ended up on the second line because uh, we should have used the zero to put it before the first line here. Let's try it again. Let's use the last line again, transfer it to zero, and this should have put it to the top here, I guess. Yes. So now we have this line three times here. Okay, so we used the write and the quit command before also, but you can actually also combine these here in, in add. So let's do a write quit. This wrote the file, gave us the new number of bytes that are contained in this file after the write, and then quit add. And let's just clear the screen here again. And I just want to show you one more thing. We can start add with the P parameter, and then we can give it a custom prompt, basically. So we want to have the greater than symbol followed by space as our prompt. And then let's just open the ancient art of add again here. And now we can see we got this prompt right from the start without having to use the capital P. And we can even define how this prompt looks like. So let's let's just print out the file again here. A wonderful, wonderful file. Very beautiful. So there's a lot more to discover here, I guess. But let's just quit here. And in my Docker container here, using the manual for add, it wasn't very, very comprehensive, actually. Just, just a few options here. And then at the end, it said... For the full documentation for add that it's just maintained as a text info manual. And I even had to install this info command on the Docker container running Fedora here. But let's just create another window here. Now we are on my macOS instance, actually in the manual of add here, there's lots more information. I don't know. So I guess this manual page here is maintained differently than on Fedora or something. So I'm going to close this here and also close the manual page inside the container. And let's just have a short look at the info command here. This is 
completely different than, than manual pages here. You can navigate using arrow keys and not even using HJKL, as you can see here. Uh, but I could hit enter and go to other sections here and, and also control D and stuff like that doesn't work. But you can use the less, less than and greater than signs for navigation and also page up, page down, stuff like that. So I hope you found this interesting. I wish you a Merry Merry Christmas. Have a great Christmas Eve. I'll be back tomorrow with Quitting Vim as the final episode for Advent of Vim 2025. I hope you'll join me again. Meanwhile, please like and type the video, subscribe to my channel, join the membership options on YouTube, or use the GitHub sponsors or Ko-fi links to support me. Thanks for watching, see you around, and take care.